All right, we're at another friend's house. This is a big old church that he bought. It's got some really cool stuff going on. Big bowling alley slab, kitchen island, and double Vulcan commercial stove. Uh, nice big open living space with some big windows and stuff and plenty of room for storage, but was in some disrepair. This is gonna be the master bedroom. Here's the stairs and the master bath. Shower to my right, toilet in the corner. His and her vanity um, and pedestal sinks here on the left. Here's what he's got for vent stack. Uh, it's complete to the basement and out now to there. And this is complete out through the roof. I just threw this one piece on since I've been here. That's all the further I've gotten. But I've got to jog over and get to there. And then we've got to roll through two sinks and come in. And we've got to be under the floor. We've got to t come over, turn, and tie into it from the toilet. And then at the at the side of the toilet run, we've got to catch the shower over to there as well. Those two couple things will be downstairs. So they got these cool retro, I think there's a name for it, um, that mint green fixtures and stuff. That's what everything's going to be in here. And we've got some um, electrical wiring to do here. A bit ad hoc, a bit, you know, as done as time allows and stuff. Um, so we're going to try and make as many things happen here while I'm in town as possible. So check this out in a little while. First, we got to fix that stud, that stud, that stud, that stud, and maybe that stud have got to come out of here. They were all too short and they're listing. You can see it here because he's the first one that's in there. Plum. That's the wrong thickness subfloor repair. It's not stuck down and it doesn't go under the wall at all. So I think we're going to pull a piece of plate out. All these studs, slide in a repair, anchor it completely. It's only 5'8 subfloor and he wants to tile it. So he's going to need another big layer of something in here. And thick layer of something and then and then he can tile. And i got to shim up the toilet flange so that when he gets there with his schluter and everything in the tile itself after the extra subfloor that it's not buried down beneath that. So we got to decide what will be going down and then put the flange up appropriately so that when it's covered it's sticking up the way that it should be. Lots to do. Maybe shouldn't have bought all this plumbing stuff so fast. Okay. Okay, so uh, you've got to do things the conventional way because you can do things the unconventional way, but you'll be at it many more times the length of time um, because you've got to be creative and solve problems every step of the way. So long story short we are trying to fast track this project so we're going to go back to fundamentals here this uh, room is not framed it's got like a concrete block wall with a coat of plaster on it with furring strips that i want to say were 22 um rifle rifle round installed nails uh or something like that to hold that on. Anyway, the room's got to have a framed wall. It certainly has to have a frame wall at this end because there's nothing upstairs for floor after they headed off the joists here. So, uh, the joists for this floor come over and don't sit on anything. They, the rim joist is attached to the concrete wall and then the other rim joist is only attached to that and it's some kind of fakakta notching situation and split up there as well where the furring strip is notched into it and then there is split um, and the weight of this joist and this joist and this joist and this joist are hanging on a single 2x12 and he's getting away with it so far but essentially it should be a double and it should sit on something over here that it's not on and so we're going to have to turn and frame a 2x4 wall over here. And that will be underneath that rim joist and furring strip situation. And we're going to end up with something that's functional. The way this is here, uh, underneath the furring strip. I mean, if it was me, I'd have taken the furring strip off. This is what I'm dealing with here. There's a bunch of, don't judge me. This isn't my work. Um, but we do have to do something productive. And so... I'm framing all around. I left a little gap for his clean out. We'll get a wall underneath at a level that allows me to add some 2x12 up there and allows me to build a framed floor that's appropriate, at least over to this wall where it jogs out, which he was planning to skip before. So if we go upstairs, um, it just... 
couldn't leave it that way because even though you can't necessarily think of all the ways or even one way that it'll screw you when you're standing right there they become clear as you go forward and as you go forward you make it harder and harder to turn around and go back and you just are irritated the whole time wishing that you had turned around and gone back so anyway the outside wall here goes along then it jumps in and goes down and so we've had mr starling trying to live in here through this hole and over in there is all bird nest so this needs to be fully obscured it shouldn't trade outside air it should be sealed i've been doing what i can here for this concrete block which is questionable with um expanding foam so then i intend to build a little bit more of a floor box out onto here that's at the same elevation as this floor box and then put the same plywood over in there and completely cover it fire blocking it out because fire shouldn't be able to burn up through there that easily and then we can frame a wall on it that comes in tight to this whereas the one he had here left a big gap behind it so that'll be in here and then you will have a big airspace beyond it and he does want to put in built-in cupboards that are out in that space and that's fine but you still have to have all of this here and then we'll have the ability to attach like the plumbing stack to things to plumb up this stack because i can attach it to things and then we'll be able to establish our elevations to get the toilet and the sink in and then we can repair this floor as well here and then we can put the wall back on top of an actual floor repair and then we can go through with plumbing to catch these sinks just for drains and then we'll see where we are if that doesn't get us into next week um, because this is a very high level task to to do with the best job possible of buttoning it up as professional as possible so that it has longevity and is functional for as long as possible but also so that changes or ad additions and stuff like that are easy to do in the future if this should fail and need to be taken down from the outside in the future just this four or five feet here and expose this much house it should be a fully framed and completed um, interior wall system just inside of that so that you can do that even in inclement weather and so that you've got the back edges of framing lumber on a plane so that you can sheathe the outside area and then you could put even just t111 or something on that quick to button it back up and close yourself in but if you scab together and do everything here just so that for the sake of the inside surfaces and get them all right and then you have further issues here and this needs to be taken away and you take it away and all you have is a rat nest falling apart trash on the far side of that wall with no attention to what it would be in the future if that should happen well you've screwed yourself so these are all the things the reasons that we do we cling to our conventions and our standards for everything because they make our work go quickly we haven't got to solve a lot of problems we can rely on the conventions and the and they, the solutions that they provide and uh, no matter what the future may bring which no one can ever know you uh, far less often end up kicking yourself for cutting corners so that's the, the that's the tale that I'm telling here today so we're gonna be at this framing for another couple of days and then we can get back to trying to plumb Okay, things are coming along. We plotted out the shower and um, toilet. There's a shower there, and it's going to come over, and that's the toilet. It's going to join immediately after the toilet elbow. We're going to go through a couple joists. Now, we ended up right on a joist here with the toilet as it happened up, upstairs. Uh, so I had to quickly lop out that piece of the joist. I, what I did was I cut it out so that when I had it off on both sides, the center line of these two pieces that had it off will be at 16 of an in, 16 inches. 16 of an inch. Anyway, the idea is that we aren't asking that plywood to do any more of a span than you know 16 inch centers or 14 and a half literal anyway uh, we'll get this one in and that one in all with joist hanger hardware on it again and then that will support the plywood in as well as it's been supported elsewhere in this floor system but it'll turn the joist in this location in the right direction so that we can run our four inch line and then that'll come over here now when we get over here let's see if i can take this piece up we get over here we'll use this um sanitary tea and it'll be this this is the sewer line going down and the stack going up i just want to be in here and coming out through that hole and and then we'll come you know through here we'll do a big elbow and we'll go over there now as we go we're going downhill a quarter inch a foot or so and to do that i'm just using the distance between the top of the hole and the subfloor so that's at something here and to do about two feet here we're at a quarter to a half an inch greater distance there and we just keep um, going like that. Also the hole is 
five inch and this is a little over four nominal. The five I did because it will fit the hub of the fitting. So this fitting hub diameter is a little under five. It'll go through right, right through that five inch hole. The problem is I can't physically get up here. You can see my marker line. I've got a physical interruption. There's no other way to put him in there and get him to come out. So since this, you can see there's a big taper on that, just leads in the pipe as you're plumbing it. It's an unnecessary amount of material and we'll just take it off quick with the oscillating tool. Then we can go back to the, in the back of the notch. Now normally I would overcut the notch to accommodate just installing the, the fitting, but as you can see, the notch is as deep as the faux rim joist or whatever. So that would become a, a, a case of doing a big tall hack job all the way up that rim joist that I'm not willing to do. So we'll just take a CH off the end of this fitting enough to go sliding up, come straight forward through the hole enough to make the corner, put, put the stack into it at that point, and, um, and then we'll be upstairs once we have the toilet and shower connected down here. And then we can finish up getting the sinks in. Now as far as the rest of the space here, um, we've got a pretty cool idea to improve their situation. Now they initially, friend, these friends of mine, worked with the stairs that we're using now, which I would have changed, but it'll work fine, and the size of the landing that, that they had, which meant that to come down here and make it right into the bedroom, this is the bedroom. Now there's this little piece has been installed on your way up the stairs, turn to go up the stairs, and it's got to be this high so that it can be strong enough to walk out on there, but also the bottom surface of it doesn't slam you in the head when you're downstairs. So it's a weird step up here. And it used to just be open, and that was just the head space to do the stairway up and around. But at some point before they got here, somebody added to it or whatever for storage. So they've been trying to work out what to do. And I said, you know, either way, you'd put a wall along and over and lose the step up visually and stuff and it certainly can't just exist in the floor plan because you'd bang your feet and stuff on it you wouldn't wall it off and leave a weird step up it's just total jank so you'd have a wall here anyway so you're working with this room as though there's a full wall there anyway and so you really ought to take that out because it's not even 100 square feet this is my opinion my professional opinion it's not even 100 square feet and it's got diminishing headline headroom and you're going to work around it as though it's a full outside corner. Just make it full outside corner. Give yourself a headroom on the stairway. They want to do a laundry to the left on that landing in the stairway so the laundry will have a higher ceiling, etc. And then they wanted to cover the window and put the bed like this because the bed won't fit here because the outside corner comes in too tightly to the edge of the landing and you can't get around the outside of the bed. And then so I said, why don't we just extend the balcony out? We can just build a 2 by 12 floor box addition. I said, to, to begin with, we started from going from this point all the way over to that point and just building a long, thin triangle, which would get us around the corner. Then they'd have an asymmetrical front to the balcony. Then I said, you know, we could always go straight from that point right across to this point, but you lose this focal thing that draws you into the entryway here and expresses the, the space you know, in terms of acoustics as well as visually, that's kind of a bummer. What if we just brought the middle out halfway so that, you know, we still had a side, a straight, and a bit of an angled side, you know, apparently from the front, but we would gain two feet or so here to go around the end of the bed. Then you could put your bed in here. You could wall it off and remove it without worrying, and you wouldn't have to cover this window in any kind of a janky way. You could get yourself a little daylight there. And they want to do a rose window here that brings the sunlight straight through into the bedroom. So that's, I think, the plan. So then I was thinking rather than making... I had originally planned on building a rectangle and then a triangle and a triangle and putting them up here. But then I thought, you know, we could get a glue lamb or an LVL, 20 foot, uh, 11 and a quarter inch tall so it's about the same as a 2 by 12 and we could just come in with 20 feet you know parallel to this front face till it stops centered in the room so the little remnant of angled side is the same and it, it, we looked at it here with the tape we're going to gain two feet as a result of bringing a 2 by 12 lvl in here with angle cuts on the ends and just stopping then we'll put it in an, uh, an acute angle hanger on this end acute angle hanger on that end and we'll just fill in joists to it like this and then we'll come we'll probably cut the subfloor back to the uh, to appropriate spot and put a new piece of subfloor up from the existing landing right out onto the additional landing all as a best practice and we'll have to remove these walls you know f to do that essentially but this straight section could slide back out and be added to the angle section i think it'll do as you turn out 
like this, we're going to depart the ceiling as we turn away. But that's nothing that you can't take up really quick with a couple of blocks that it will be good enough. We won't have to totally discard it. And in the end, we, they'll be able to have the bedroom the way that they want. So I think those are going to be the two major projects down here. We'll get that downstairs plumbing set up and then we'll come to the floor here somewhere. I think we're just going to stay along the floor and turn up with a Y in, you know, two by four Y, and the two inch will get bushed down to one and a half, go around the corner and catch these two sinks. And then the stack will be complete out of here. And they'll be putting a cap or a rag in the toilet hole and the shower hole to stop the sewer stink coming in, but it'll be ready for hardy board and tile and to fill in stud layout and put uh, drywall up and then they can pour some cellulose over in there which would be really nice as well. And this ought to get R22, like rock wool bats, in this wall. And at least R15 or whatever rock wool in this wall. Because all of these walls here are just concrete block with plaster on them. This has got R13 in it, fiberglass, which I would have said put rock wool. And this, I'm sure, was framed 2 by 4 despite the fact that it leaves more than is easy to... It's just... I would have done 2 by 6 so that you could just fly across the inside and finish it as well. And then this is the ultra cheap windows, you know, for cost effectiveness, but they have no jam. So then you have to build a jam and in any case, so you may as well build it. I don't know what the plan for finishing this is. Um, you can just, you know, you can fur it out. It's hard to see because it's backlit right now. But this is the type of stuff I don't like to do um, because you save in the lumber order initially, but then you have to make custom ripped thickness to fur it out to planer with here. Even if you only put like one in to carry drywall, and you don't translate the stud layout in, but you just put one in the middle here to get from there to him to this, and you just carefully drywall it, that would be all right. But you're still making custom rips and installing them, and then if there's any jankiness here that you didn't keep track of when you put this in, the custom rips from the table saw may sit proud or shallow here or there. It just runs out of control. So if it had been me, I would have just stomached, you know, doing at least some of this out of 2 by 6 the major surround, for each space out of two by six and like bisect it once. And then if you needed to carry the plywood on the outside, send two by fours in there, I don't know. Anyway, you should be able to just finish this. And I would have put rock wool rather than fiberglass in because you can get, an R for the same physical size bat, you can get um, two more R's, <laughs> two more R's value. Uh, you can get R15 in there. And really it would have been better because R19 fiberglass will fit in a two by six wall, but I believe it's R20 something when you go to rock wool in a two by six wall. And it, if it was me, I would have had a, the fully two by six wall, the maximum amount of R value in this entire end, considering the fact that the side walls of this building essentially have fucking zero for insulation. And these is, these are the things that increase your property value for time and effort spent and a little bit more material cost increase the property value and obviously make you make it up over time the heating bill goes down um but they're doing what they can in here and we're getting it right while we're here so come on back and see us when we get that major line all in downstairs and we're working upstairs okay plumbing drains are in battery savers on now apparently but the stack has been connected and as after it goes through the floor here it runs around and catches the toilet and then continues down there, shower, uh, comes over and joins the toilet and goes down. And then we get the sinks here. Just a little bit of fall on the way down. Had to make a couple clearance holes through a couple more studs. And then we loosened this last guy and just tipped him out of the way because I didn't feel like friggin' with the uh, end cap on the other wall. But I was able to send this right in as a whole stick. Clip it there, clip it there install those um, adapters to, to the p-traps that'll go in the pedestal sinks eventually or whatever kind of sink you want to put in here um, just to tighten this up in here I'll probably squirt a little um, expanding foam in there and uh, that's an inch and or that's two and nine sixteenths hole which makes it no problem to put inch and a half pipe through and inch and a half fittings in there if you end up doing that much and then um, over here I frame this out like a window hole and um, we're going to make use of the extra depth here, even though it's going to need mostly full of insulation. And we're going to put baffle in here so that I'm going to try and seal this up so that this is full of insulation up to, you know, the plate top, basically. And then the baffle slides through behind the top of the plate and down to the soffit area here. It continues up into the bay up so high so that when you pour in loose insulation up here on top of the drywall, it doesn't fall over in the baffle and plug it up. So we've got to go a little bit further, which I think if you get four foot pieces we may need to just add another piece to it eventually we'll get that much done here and this opening is for us uh three cabinets it's a 
36 by 30 and uh, my buddy bought three one foot wide cabinets that are 30 inches tall from Ikea and we'll just one, two, three, so mull them together, face frame mull um, and maybe you have to add a little like sliver between them like Luan or something to hold them square and then slide the group in after the drywall's on and the face frame should trim them out well enough and then you could tr trim it further um, after that. So he'll have the toilet sitting I believe this way and then the nearest cupboard will make it I should turn the light on but I probably can't the nearest cupboard will make the door open to you like this so you can put your toilet paper and whatever there and then the second pair of them will open like a book or whatever symmetrically I think and then these cavities here are for these classic medicine cabinets they go into there and we're going to do water supply next so I got the, the um, drill bits out and the takeoffs or the stub out connections ready there I'm looking at this toilet and I'm thinking I really hate I'm going to want to bring because the water supply is going to come up from the basement as well and it's going to be in that new 2x6 wall we made in the pantry um, but I want it to be on our side the in interior side of the framing as much as possible with as much insulation on the outside as possible because not only when it's bitter cold out is there um, that temperature but this entire block structure is that bitter cold temperature and it sucks a ton of heat out more so than just sheathing and um, and um, siding it holds that bitter cold from the nighttime and those even if the day comes up it holds that cold for a long time anyway long story short it can freeze your water supply if you're not in here for if you go on vacation in the bitter cold and you come home and you got a water debacle so we're gonna sneak it to the face of this framing we're gonna play it now this wall is in here um, on the inside surface of that framing wall downstairs. So we're going to basically run it on the middle line, center line of this wall's thickness and know that we're, you know, 10 inches away from the outside. Downstairs, we'll go down there and maybe this will make it clearer what I'm saying, but um, the 2x6 wall downstairs is further toward the outside of the building. And so you want to stay away from the face of it with water so that it doesn't get punctured. punctured. You know, the, our upstairs wall is like basically on the gap because mm, the stack comes up behind it. So, yeah, it's basically in that gap. Now, back we're back here closer to the outside wall here. So I'm saying rather than being in the middle of this here, we may scoot it up a little bit. Just anything to get more R value behind it, and that'll be our water supply. But there's the toilet coming over, and it ties in there and the shower there. Oh, and then we got our um, LVL up. So he went up pretty easily. I put that angle on the ends of him. We put a couple of cleats on there after we cleared the furring off, like I was saying. And then we both went up a ladder and just set him up there. And then I had a center line on him and I just uh, checked it to the center line of the of the building and the landing up there with a with a carpenter's square. Slid it back and forth and just pinned it with a couple construction screws for now. We're gonna get LVL acute angle hangers to put the ends of it in, which will hold an inch and three quarter width instead of the inch and a half. That, which is the ones that we bought for regular framing lumber and then we'll fill in joists and then we'll move those walls and stretch the subfloor out but uh it's coming right along and that gives it quite a bit of i didn't actually measure it. i think it's 21 inside so it's close to two feet additional um 22 inches anyway of additional um space in there which will be plenty to slink around, sneak around the end of the bed which was the problem all right making progress Okay, quick sidetrack while well, we're going to get ready and supply water to that bathroom. I came down to see what the water main situation looks like. Uh, copper, flexible, three-quarter copper routed in a protective HDPE sleeve or some such thing. Maybe it was um, threaded through that sleeve at some point. I'm not quite sure. Or at least it was sleeved to be do a little concrete repair to pour around it. Anyway, uh, oh, I didn't even notice that little bit of moisture there. Is that what that is? Um, well, we got a, sh a main shut off in the meter with a bunch of bushing. I mean, you can't, this is a hardware store's worth of components in here, which is just crazy. And then it's the push to connect, and then it whips up and jumps up finally. So it comes in three quarter, three quarter right to here, and then um, is bushed down to uh, half here, and stays half and is pushed down and, and all these components these components are three quarter of an inch components um so we're going to just replace i think this with a three quarter inch diameter nipple this with a three quarter inch diameter nipple and here we're going to omit this valve and go immediately to pex and then we're probably going to put the manifold on the wall but we're going to essentially keep it three quarter all the way up to the manifold again instead of necking it down here in the middle and clean this all up 
and most of these don't go anywhere. And we want, in the end, I want this copper manifold for the bathroom stairs because it's capped. And we're going to use a uh, flow through here so that uh, it's three quarter all the way and with half inch takeoffs um, but in whatever orientation here if he so chooses to keep going with three quarter and go somewhere like the far end of the property and break it out again for another bathroom or like a nice big hose for a greenhouse or something to have a nice big diameter you got pretty good municipal pressure here so talked to my dad about this and he said it wouldn't hurt so we're just going to throw this together while we're right here and I'll clean up this room a little bit so we'll look at that in a minute this guy's really going to town today with that electromagnet, just moving scrap all day, every day. Anyway, I haven't been back in here in a while for an update. I've been working the last few days on plumbing and stuff, so generally speaking, drains have been in, like we looked at, but also now water supply is in here. And ultimately, I went for fewer connections, fewer fittings. There's less time spent putting in elbows and tees and doing bends and routing um, based on that more precise precise lengths and stuff so that it looks nice and is orderly and there's fewer fittings purchased overall and in the end there's fewer opportunities for things to fail because most of these circuits uh, if not all of them have been, well just i guess most of them uh, have only got one connection at the manifold where the mains come into these hot and cold or you know at the other end where this goes to the mix valve and over here you know there is a t because we got two sinks so there's a t on the cold and a t on the hot at this particular sink station but other than that the only other connections are at this end here and we had other considerations here given the finished nature downstairs that kept me from bringing this over underneath the floor coming through the wall obviously there's a door so we opted to go up above and do a spin here now hot and cold are insulated in this wall because again this is just plaster on concrete block so uh it'll pull you know there'll be a lot of cold in here even though we're going to throw insulation in here so um along with the hot i thought even the insulating the cold because of course you know 50 degree water is a lot warmer than negative 20 degrees outside and they genuinely want to slip as much you know fiberglass in here as they can if it was me i'd use rockwell but he's got a lot of free fiberglass that he that he scored a friend so um long story short that was what we opted to do here just took it as far as it would go without fighting it against the pressure of these hold downs it's essentially well organized and over here we had to go under the door again uh the door opening to get to the hot bidet and the cold you know typical water supply here so he's got a warm not hot i don't want a hot bidet the warm or whatever uh, electrically warmed or no hot waterly warmed <laughs> Um, bidet connection there and we were talking about how big of a shower stall this is this is a situation where you may put another drop ear mix valve on this wall so you have a his and her shower head or if you were going to do a rain head or two his and her rain heads or whatever or, or his and her showers and a rain head in the middle now is the time to you know opt to do so and consider where the drop ear and stuff goes so this little bit here may change if they change their mind this has been framed out like from before but we got just a simple single cupboard rather than one two three twelve inches it's a full 36 inch wide with two doors on it sitting downstairs so that's that and we got a couple of electrical things here because it's two pedestal sinks I, I centered them on the wall but i spread them out like 25 26 inches between the actual sink so that a 24 inch cupboard or so like a, a low dry sink or more of a jewelry cabinet or whatever you may want to put here could go on in between them full of drawers or whatever you want for the things that you needed a pedestal sink if it's if it won't fit inside of the of the medicine cabinet and then there's uh two gang outlets that are exposed for beard trimmer charger whatever and and two and four gang outlets behind that cupboard in in a sense depending on i suppose that changes it but how where it's at however flat iron curling iron whatever else you know phone charger if you want to keep that stuff looking clean and plug it in or even put it through the cabinet and whatever that's all the electrical outlets in here there'll be a double gang you know there'll be a fan exhaust and humidity exhaust fan uh and light system on the first switch and then there's some sconces i think it's one two three four vintage sconces on the wall they're like uh they'll be tiled in and they'll be on the next switch or what have you so there'll be do two different electrical circuits in here twitch circuits but probably no more outlets that i can think of you don't want to get, be able to reach anything from the shower and i think that fan light will be over your head here as and oh there'll be some ceiling lights can lights or led discs or whatever like that so um but overall 
It's looking pretty sweet. Did a clean job of sweating to PEX on this mix valve and just sweat a little simple copper plug into the tub sort of s situation there. And again, mains come up. The only thing is uh, I'd, have liked, I'd have liked to have run three quarter mains all the way up here because that's what all these manifolds are built for, for a reason. But uh, unfortunately, uh, we went with a mana block I'll show you downstairs, which I'm excited about. But it's a relative budget mana block. You can get bigger, better, better ones. And that's the scenario here. We'll get started with this. And uh, if they want to, you know, improve upon it in the future, they can do so. But it has only got half-inch connections on it, so there's no point in my mind. Um, these are all for half-inch. I believe it's three-quarter inch thread, but uh, the little pack snipple that they give you that actually stays installed on the end of your water line, where is that thing? These... These half inch. Oh, and we can look at that water service. I did a new ch mini check, mini dual check, and uh, pressure regulator, all of which were three quarter inch lines. But these here, we frigged this up because the crimper we were using isn't. I don't know, normally use these um, bands, and he, my buddy, had I thought he had a swag tool for them, but he actually has a swag tool for a stainless steel, so it messed these up. So be aware of the fact that you either got to use Propex expansion uh, to put these nipple things on. Or super clean, appropriately swagged, swedged um, copper rings because, uh, for fucking Christ's sake, um, this little ring has to be installed beyond. So he goes on there first, and you want to make sure and not have enough hands and see if you can't knock this into the fucking baptismal that's in the bottom of this basement. And there's nowhere to set anything, and I'm freaking out. So. Okay, so he stays, you know, you put him on the line first, then you crimp this in, but ultimately you can run that down tight, and it's a it's a O-ring, see him on there, that makes that tight connection. Now, in so in theory, you can move these around and change things around without ever having to cut and re-crimp an end onto the, uh, unless you make a major change. So the point is, what they supply for this component that fits into the PEX and attaches to here, once it's under that collar, is for half inch diameter pecs. And I don't know that I can get it for three quarter, even though the opening, you know, and so then we can't take three quarter anywhere. Um, it's three quarter in, and then you can go straight out with the cold, I believe, on three quarter and go to a sub panel with that. But you have to bring boiler uh, water in. Actually, I guess it's your choice. Whether you want to do a, a hot sub panel with separate cold in or vice versa. Anyway. This is what we're doing because I want to encourage my buddy to think in an orderly fashion with his plumbing in the future. And this was a no-brainer at 160 bucks, And I think it really is a nice thing to have. And the whole idea here is to upgrade your property. And ultimately, this will be trimmed and coming down the wall real keen, clean. But uh, we came right straight through the wall. This is a 16 or 17 inch thick solid um, concrete block. Which down here, this is where the block ends. This is what I had to drill through over there. So it was, I got a 18 inch, one inch diameter hammer drill for SDS. Uh, my SDS drill and went right straight through with it. So now we come kind of straight up. It's on the wall, nice and rigid. You've got your, you know, meter and it's all three quarter throughout and three quarter nipple to this bad boy here, which is a real um, trim pressure regulator, which I didn't frig with it. And you could give it a little more if you wanted. And this is a super tiny dual check for your water supply, right to three quarter and right to that mana block. And so I might have considered just moving to the right and coming up here and put that whole mana block here, which is what he kind of had going on, kind of ad hoc here. Uh, but there isn't room without taking the shells down, and then there isn't anywhere to go with his stick. Well, spray paint that could be changed in the future to move all of this into that room. And given what you've got for lengths here, it would be an easy kind of um, change to make. For now, this is the clean area for it. And we just got them hooked back up, you know, that night. And I haven't been back because it hasn't been time to charge this with water yet. So anyway, that's what's up with that. Now we'll do another update on the balcony project. Okay, sometimes you've got to do what you've got to do. We had these outermost... Um, scab blocks or whatever this two by six at the far ends to sit this LVL down onto positively for safety's sake when we first install it so I left those 
but I moved a few in here to get underneath the ends of the first full width of this thing, considering that it's this, it's growing in width all the way up from behind us, uh, as well as it being right along the pair of uh, joists there and pair of joists at the other end of this entryway that are essentially beams. I screwed up into those and I'm out underneath this now as well as just having these step ladders with these clamps on it which is where I started and continued from there. The idea being that I've carved on where those everything comes together. I've carved on that a lot. I've taken a lot of nails out and uh, I didn't want anything to tip down fall or anything like that because ultimately uh, the end is disassembled to that extent here, you know, where this thickness here. Uh, I cut nails off of both of these inside surfaces to drop the blocks out of there. So I've got like what's left of nails through this timber into the these here. What's left of nails from this timber, I don't even think into that. Sorry, that's got a joist hanger on it. That one doesn't even have one. These ones do. Anyway, because of the fact that this is all hanging out here, I've got it really well supported. Then I got an idea of what the angle is on the ends. I gave myself a little room so it's not fighting me. I put them on this here piece. And essentially, he's just going to go down in and stop, like, his ends are going to stop on those cleats that I put here and at the other end. Then I'm going to shoot them all up full of nails from the back, shoot them all up full, full of nails from the front. And um, then I can take my support away and go back to working up here in every other capacity and downstairs to cover this up and get ready for this walls system here. Sorry, walking around with this 50-pound pack on up and downstairs and trying to hustle. Um, it's not, uh, my breath isn't gone because I'm making a video, it's gone because I've been huffing and puffing for a while now. Anyway, I just wanted to catalog how much fooling around, oh, and I haven't decided if I can shove this guy over, I unbuttoned him, he's blocked there, so that's the farthest, that's the longest lever I can get of freedom here, and then I'm using the clamp to push, and try to push, he's, he was practically on top of that intersection, so he's gone six or seven, eight inches. I want to get him away enough to see if I can't um, use fasteners through the, the bracketry that I'm going to install here. If I can't, I'll have to head him off like I was saying before. But at this point, I had that idea to just shove it over, and if that works, I can't do it here because the subfloor is nailed into it. Unless I slice along and cut the subfloor free, and then push it over and work from below until I'm all done, and then bring that back over again, and then shoot the subfloor back in. <sighs> Cool, 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 Hopefully that goes right in there. We'll see. Okay, last night just before we packed it in, we got that new 2x12 slid in and then shot that all together from both sides, which is good. Now, finally, our big heavy LVL acute angle hangers came, and we've been working around the LVL in its final position this whole time. So then the question became, you know, you can slide those up from beneath. The angle still needs to be tweaked, but it's like the angle that you get with it, which is this here, is, is, is as acute as it gets, I think, before you can't drive these screws in the small side. So I put all the screws in while it was formed from the factory. Now we need to shut that angle probably in half, you know, take half of it out and close it even farther. And this piece has got to go back in here, but it can't slide in from below or above. It's attached to joist hangers all the way down. So you may have noticed I've got them bent out of the way using these clamps which allowed me to stick this flange on here. And I thought I might have reached in here with a hammer or something and bent that, shut that angle to start with, but instead I'm gonna take that pressure off the clamps and let this come back. And then uh, I can squeeze everything together with clamps and just slowly cold form it down to where I want. Beating it with the hammer is just gonna deform it all out and it'll look shitty. Uh, I did have to reef the fuck out of it to get it to open up like this so that we can get this around and then I'm gonna swing this up and around again at the top. And when we're all done here, you won't know necessarily how I did that, I guess, and, and you wouldn't even care, most people. Uh, we'll get the other end in like that. And then um, I did so much thinking on where these this beam comes together with this other beam. I did talk about putting that double joist hanger on there. The idea is that uh, it has nothing to do, this is a heavier one that I got. So we had that Tinker Toy one that I made fun of. Where's he? These are the acute angles for regular floor joists pair of heavy um, double hangers that I got thinking along those lines. I don't know where the other double, oh here he is. So here's a conventional for, you know, inch and a half thick lumber double joist hanger, right? And then there's a pair of LVL hanger, a uh, hanger for a pair of LVL, and it's uh, thicker, thicker steel than this stuff here, 
right? Um, but really, these are all supposed to be shelves. The way a hanger works is you attach him real well on this aspect, and then he, he, he creates a nice ledge for something to just sit on. Then these few, you know, you notice there's so many fasteners on that, flas on that flange, and only a few fasteners on this flange, and they just kind of toll nail into the end. The idea being that, you know, it's dif very difficult for it to slide off the end of that beam. But that's not normally how you're loading things. You're normally, normally stacking them on that shelf. So, to put this hanger on here in this position is like, as if this were ex extremely sturdy and we were looking to hold the end of this up. Where really what we're looking for here is in, in reverse. This is sturdy being on that wall. It comes out here and we want to create a, a knuckle here or, or a group of joints that are all butt joints, which is I guess the best you can do under these circumstances for this here. Anyway, uh, it has nothing to do with needing a shelf, essentially. And this here would, would be still, you know, potential to slide off. Really, you're only asking these little toenail screws. I think you could understand what it is that I'm saying. So then I started thinking about inside corner mending, just opening, you know, this one can be, this one can go up at 90 right there, smash this one open across the face, and, you know, a little bit more closed on this here. And then I started with the conventional thickness material again, and ultimately upgraded from these to these which are heavy for LBL again, they're, you know, the material's almost twice as thick, right? Anyway, these are real heavy, and they say right on them, uh, use quarter by inch and a half, which are these mammer jammers, right? So the conventional um, uh, Simpson hanger hardware. Wish I could collect that one that fell on the floor. Get them out of my bag. You know, they look like these for those light duty steel brackets. And then you get these big bad boys um, for this heavy stuff. Anyway, that is what I'm going to do because we're, this, none of this is real, you know, correct, but we're gonna do what we can here. So we'll put an angle into the face of it there. We'll smack one of these open and stick him on the front here and we'll, you know, shut it, you know, not one, you know, we'll adjust another one up to fit in there and we'll put it together with all those quarter inch screws and uh, if I'm really feeling frisky, I could even, I bought a tube of construction adhesive I could pump. See, that should have fit there. Just sloppy. I could pump that full of construction adhesive, but I don't really know that that makes that much of a difference. We mostly just want to put those screws and everything all in one time, try not to split any lumber out, and then just count on that and the ends of this here as being the most structural something like this can get, and then finish filling in the joist layout, put some glue down on it, and put that subfloor in position. That's today's task. I'm sure they would love to come home and not have holes through their balcony that was previously far more finished than this and had walls on it already that we took off. So uh, it is making it a lot better, but we want to be cost effective here. All right. Morning, everybody. Just having a little cup of coffee. We're not retired, but I, li I like this mug. That's the dream. Now, went through a lot of different iterations of what to do in these locations because uh, they generally aren't that standard. It's not technically correct the way that this was done. Really, there would be a post here, basically. This is the end of three beams, and there would be a post here. Same thing over there. Uh, whether or not we had added to the balcony, but there just isn't. So we're just, we're looking at a four foot cantilever and beefing up the edges of it, coming over from the wall, ostensibly really nice attachment in the wall. I sure as hell didn't take a look at it. But as you can see, we got some of those really heavy uh, fish plates, mending plates. I drilled three big holes in the center of them. Let's go upstairs and look at that. And uh, so once they were all in with quarter by one and a half, Simpson uh, hardware, which is what they're designed to be used with. Then I took a real long, like, lag replacement, timber lock, what do you want to call it, construction screw. So we had the original 90, then we opened this one up a little bit. You can see on Instagram, I'm going to make a post, um, where Brad had this big clamp thing that we could sandwich and smash them down. We also had to beat it with a hammer, and this, these ones here on this were even more flat, practically flat. Then you can see I added three holes 
and I came all the way in here with like 10 inch construction screws that are all the way back several three or four inches into this beam and that pulls this all together real nice plus all the uh, joist hangers and stuff now over here because of the layout and everything else this joist ends up the hanger need to be right on top of that hardware so I haven't figured out a solution for that just yet just keep heading things off and heading things off you can do it it's just more friggin around basically I could just jump straight across from the first opportunity to put a joist hanger on here right through there and that would bisect making these or extraordinarily long but unnaturally narrow and we're just looking to you know you can't have nothing here because that 5 8 subfloor I couldn't even do that with three quarter subfloor there it would be creaky and bouncy so here's where we headed off this joist so we could get in here and apply that plate Ugh. Slippies. Here's where we headed off this joist so we can get in here and apply that plate. Like I said before, there really should have been a joist here, and so we'll see how bouncy that is. We can add a little bit more from underneath, but we're in a kind of a hurry here to put something down on top. So we're going to glue and apply subfloor today. And uh, and then we got to go up. We went up and looked. He's got um, rafter, like truss constructions that are at two foot center. So there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one, there's one. And he drilled, we went up and looked, he drilled out right there next to one and right there next to the other. And right between them is where the top plate of our wall is going to end up being. And so I think we're going to take the sound tile down, but we're going to leave the furring strip and the previously existing ceiling up. And that'll be what the top plate is actually up and touching. I can't see the merit in working out above this height without baker scaffold or anything else and trying to cut that all out and rebuild and block the rafter system from below. However, I do see the merit in that wall attaching to big thick blocking from one um, rafter to the next or one truss to the next truss so that it's helping to hold this up out here and that it's not bouncing so much. See, if we only anchor to the furring strip, then it's pulling a little bit of that bounce goes away, but it's still pulling and bouncing on that furring strip because it's quite thin and chintzy and old. And what I'm thinking is you'll have collateral cracking of the drywall here constantly from walk traffic up here that you don't notice is bouncing a little bit, but it's just too much for the drywall to take. So we want to take as much bounce out as possible. Long story short, we'll put the plate on these furring strips, but we will go upstairs and we'll install blocking. You know, we can go right up and walk right along on that. We can install some blocking at a couple key areas. We'll start with two, maybe one in the middle, and uh, we'll go right through the top plate of the wall and right on up through space and between the furring strip and, and through that old ceiling, and we'll get right into that block and we'll pull that top plate up snug and sandwich all of this stuff but we'll, we'll be right on the two by eight construction of the of the rafters upstairs and that'll allow us to save cutting anything out as well as gain all of the appropriately rigid attachment to help support it's everything we can do to support the leading edge of this it's not terrible to be out there you know i was out there walking around brad was out here walking around you you know it's not wangling all around in some ways but in others it would be considered quite bouncy so that's our task. Oh hey, you caught me right in the middle of putting down subfloor. There they go. Look at that. Clean, natural, clean burning coal. PA loves that shit, man. Endless fucking fossil fuel bullshit. Now, gluing it down. Certainly was never glued the rest of it. But that'll help quiet things down, tighten it up, and homogenize this framing system um, into one framing system. Would I have liked to have gone, kept right on going and, you know, been full width? See, we're not quite 48 here. We're like 45 or something. It would have been nice. But uh, we pulled enough wall and stuff down now. I don't want to have to pull. I didn't want to have to pull any more down. We're using, I prefer, uh, Loctite PL. I generally use all the PL uh, landscape stuff, eight, eight times stuff, three times stuff. It's all polyurethane construction adhesive for different purposes. This is obviously for subfloor. People like and know the trade name Liquid Nails. I'm just not into, just not into silicones. I believe this is a silicone. Regardless, other Liquid Nail products are silicones. Let me smell it. Yeah, probably. Anyway, it's really hard to get it to come out of a, of a 
tube that's been cut back really far even. And the, the one nice thing about the PL subfloor is that it's far more viscous. And I generally um, remember gluing subfloor down from things like new builds and stuff like that where, and in my climate zone, I've been out in the elements putting subfloor down. And really, if it's cold or anything other than a hot summer day, I don't want to fight with, uh, and usually when you're doing a lot of subfloor, it's sheets and sheets and sheets. It's, you know, tubes and tubes and tubes, bigger tubes even. Long story short, I'll take everything that I can get. The PL comes out far easier, it flows better. And see, this is, you could, the brighter white stuff is the liquid nail stuff. You can see my, it's the consistency of it's getting caught and hung up and dragging across and then falling off and what have you. Whereas this brown stuff here, it just goes down and it stays down. It lays down nice, it behaves. It doesn't fall, it doesn't have too much, uh, you know, tensile strength and like tear and come along with the gun and fight with you as much, all based on that consistency thing. So is it all subfloor glue, allegedly? Is it relatively similar in price? Basically, um, I'll take what I can get. I did come to the end of the PL. That's why I ended up with liquid nails here. That's one thing I'll say is they didn't have any more of the PL on the shelf. But right here is, makes a nice comparison back to back or side by side. All right, one more notched full sheet and then a little piece and uh he'll work out he should work out he isn't i mean it's not really ideal you know he'll work out to be where will he be you know this one whole side of him is basically one floor bay at least it's cut short um it's just a lot i may end up blocking across this a couple of times just because we don't have the ability to keep going with this sheet and the deflection in there you don't realize the fact that the subfloor or any plywood, when it does 14 and a half inches across one floor bay, um, it seems like it should be able to do that anywhere. Well, normally it keeps going in both directions, you know, um, or at least in one of the directions. You really never, you wouldn't come in here for all the other reasons aside, you wouldn't come in here and put 16 inch strips down on 16 inch centers to cover the, this floor. It would be a lot bouncier given the same thickness of material than it is when you put bigger sheets down because those sheets you know lace and they create a, a full you know you're you're bringing in pieces but you're making you should be thinking about making one homogenized thing and um over there is not ideal for that purpose but we had other reasons that we couldn't i just keep pointing that out it'll probably be fine all right so my buddy's got these cool old factory casement windows. Uh, they don't have a jam really that's just like an L channel all the way around. The sides crank out. They're glazed and they've been sitting outside for a while. That back one looks like it could use a little work. But he has three of them all the same size. And so... <clears throat> what? Fucking drains and shit. So if we pop in... And we look at this wall we're putting up on the front of this balcony. Right, Drac? Dracula! Okay, don't bump anything, buddy. So, <clears throat> we want to put one, two, three up here. Now, the balcony has three sides. One, and then uh, one at 90 degrees to the, to the building, and then this third one over here. Those side ones are at slight angles, okay? And we built this piece in the middle to extend it out. And I did my best to center that based on what I had up there at the time. And then there was a closet wall here for this side to be closet. And then this turns a corner here. So we were looking for how to place these two window openings um, in that wall and just skip having the third. But I got them all in there and they're kind of like centered on that piece of flat wall. And I look at this one here and it's so close to what looks like the middle of the building. Certainly is the seam in the ceiling tiles. It's the line on which both of these lights are hanging. And so sometimes it's more importantly what looks like the center of the building and what isn't actually the center of the building. But I was left with the idea last night that I want to find the actual center of this building. So from here I could make it to the wall framing over there with my tape to a to a line in the floor and from here I could make it underneath the stove to the back wall with the tape and I found out that the building is uh, 381 inches across and then uh, where is it here and then I put the center line on the floor here it is it's 190 and a half at the center so this is the center line of the building and I backed off with the laser level okay and I put the laser line right through that line on my floor over there and it goes on up and it and it's you know on the front of the beam up there i'm not sure if you can see it but ultimately it's also on the uh door on the way by and and this is a 60 inch door opening so at 30 inches is essentially where the gap is in the door 
And if you can see there, without me getting in the way of it, it's right on the gap of the door, and it's right on that rim joist upstairs. And so we go up, after doing it all this way, after, you know, this morning, after putting those window holes in last night, based on a center line that I found up here. And there it is, and I wrote it. It's the center line. <laughs> now, I know what I'm doing, but also the original structure, whoever built that knew what they were doing as far as keeping it plumb level and square. Now, this balcony and stuff that's been added since then is a bit questionable. But for now, I just thought that was a cool, um, interesting geometry check your work in action. Okay, we've been filling in this wall, cripple studs, and stuff like that. Now, coming up the stairs here, the ceiling used to be like right here in your face. It was hung around in there. And that's because, um, you know, they wanted, this was originally open like this, which is the block construction here. Um, but it must have been, it must have been shortly after, somebody didn't realize it, it was like never finished with plaster up in here. There was a bit of an e-wall here that came down, but that was like finished inside of this floor space in here. Um, it hadn't previously been finished up into this area here. So it was like it was designed to have this thing and then somebody felt like they should extend the second floor over in here. The problem is this is the 2 by 10 dimension of the second floor framing. And so, I mean, that's about, I'm not, it's about at 6 foot, maybe 6 foot 1. So to put more 2 by 10 in here, you would have had a 6 foot 1 ceiling. This door would have worked okay. I don't know why they just didn't do that. Because what they did do was put 2 by 6 framing in. Um, starting at that little witness point there, so it's five and a half from there. So it was like a four and a half or something, four inch step up in that room into this here. And it was like a tripping sort of hazard. It didn't really add floor space to this room. You still need to wall that step up off or it's just ugly. So anyway, I encouraged them to tear it out, which they did. Um, we're just going to wall this off like this, and then we're going to carry the plane of this wall right across the second floor bedroom, and this will be a closet. You'll never appreciate that the closet isn't as deep this way as the bedroom is, um, really, and, and ultimately that's a nice clean way to disguise this jog, even though it wouldn't be unsightly to have it in the room now. Long story short, this is all open, and they're going to keep it open. You're going to come up here, and there's going to be a bit of a, a pony wall here for like privacy purposes and then it's going to stop and it's going to go all the way up here and then it's going to go all the way up this opening that you walk around and there'll be a stacked laundry you know stack washer dryer here and maybe a little work surface or something but mostly laundry room like in here and then you've got this big wall where you can put some artwork or something turn head right back on up the stairs um it's wildly out of square just just wildly out of square i don't know if you can see the tiles that are here but this is one line of tiles that goes along like that um, it's hard to describe. It's just wildly out of square. This here is like, I don't know, you know, 85 degrees or something, 80 degrees inside corner. And then it goes around the corner here. Now there's always, or there have been this like cap that fit right here between this width of the wall. And then it jumped over and it was this width here, so you could see how that used to be like that. And it was capped. Now this is a pair of 2x10s here, but I established that behind that is hollow. Essentially, I need to get around here and down with the washer drain, so I needed to see what was in here. I think what we're going to do here is this, this short wall that, that comes out. I'd like the surface of it to have drywall that goes right down in behind the stair stringer. So the framing is going to move over, you know, a lot further than I had planned on it being until I opened up this wall. So the plane of this wall is going to go right across here and then stop, turn, and go over. Which will mean that we'll add to the face of this framing uh, to get it out to the face of this beam here and we'll start our new wall there and go across and we're going to do what we can to t keep it square here but who knows what's square you know who knows what anything is here this is an addition that's the issue you know we just looked at uh maybe standalone video i may cut it into this one but i you know found the middle of the building and ran all around and threw it upstairs with the laser line and it came up like almost dead nuts onto the middle of the building that i had found it using other ways which is to say you know and i ended that video by saying how nice this original structure was from here forward this first area here on the front of this building this must have been like you know, the front doors or something back in the day, somewhere here. Uh, but all of this is an additional, is, is an addition. 
So it's a bit funky what they did here. I don't know, because this wall has no, you know, it's just block. There it is there. So there are no outlets in this wall all the way down both sides of this place, which is super annoying. I don't know how he ended up getting any into the back above the kitchen counter over there. I have to ask him what he did. Um, you know, but when you do that, you got to add so much you gotta add all that dimension to the to the trim of the windows. But honestly, if this was my building, that's exactly what I would do. Even if I was gonna keep this paneling, I'd take that off. I'd take whatever you wanna call this trim crap off. I'd frame this wall out completely. I'd insulate it. And I'd build extension jams for these three windows. I mean, that's not that big of a deal. And then I'd put it all back together again with outlets in it and everything the way that I wanted. Um, but they're not interested in doing that, at least not right now. So. Trying to do things that are in keeping with that idea if that should happen in the future, that keep things organized and legitimate. Um, these appear to go right on down through onto something. Uh, I don't think, I mean, this is like a ledger here, and that, I believe, is anchored into the block appropriately. However, we don't do anything like that anymore. You don't rely just on ledger hardware, usually. Um, certainly not into old-ass block. Anyway, I'm going to leave these columns underneath this. It won't hurt anything. So we'll pack this out. We'll put a wall across here. We'll try to tie the washer drains and stuff and we'll have to get water supply in the wall here as, as well and um, we'll have to do so in such a way that keeps it from freezing again because it's another big monolith of concrete that just is an inside corner and just stands out in the freezing cold all winter long so hopefully we don't get all these systems in these outside walls here and uh, end up with problems as a result of the cold but there's only so much that you can do and we'll pump all this cracks and stuff full of great stuff and pieces of uh, you know, fiber has to go in there, more great stuff. We're going to put baffle in the ceiling the way that it should be in here. I don't understand what happened here. Uh, it's like they were just smashing blocks in half with a hammer and just, you know, kind of smoothing the concrete together. This here was a really rough... Well, this was the end of the... This was probably turned a corner and went that way, and they decided to add this vestibule as part of this entrance. But uh, they got textured block turned around the other way. I don't know. This will be a lot nicer than it was. Stay tuned. Here's a quick little bit of coverage on how I start on a project like this where this entire sort of floor plan here is racked out. There's nothing square about it. Everything's funky. It's super weird. And uh, in this particular case, there's no benefit to just following along. We've got a flat, relatively level floor here. We may as well lay out a uh, square um, footprint for the room, any kind of square format like tiling or anything else like that. There were carpet tiles in here before. Anything like that, when you cover the floor, it can be relatively square when you put it down. And you won't highlight the fact that the room's out of square when you put like square washing machine or a countertop or something else in here that betrays the fact that the room's widely out of square. Um, this wall's in here at 90 degrees now to the length of the building and that's sort of where I start here. I'm looking at fundamentals like we said this particular structure is pretty plumb level and square. The stuff behind me behind this wall is out and it was like a cheap addition and either it was okay when it was up and it's moved since then or it wasn't really even okay when it was up. So what I'm going to do here is because we're on this side of the building forget about that wall over there we'll use this wall okay and this wall like I said doesn't have even any drywall underneath it it's just either got it must have furring strips I think is what's on it. Um, um, and then the paneling, but it's a block wall throughout the, and down the whole side. This is some of what's, you know, under their original OG. It must have been painted or something before they even did any of this interior work. Just a block building. Um, anyway, it's safe to say that this plane is the plane that goes right along this whole wall all the way along. So to start with, I just did a quick cursory measure here on this piece of wood. Uh, I'll leave my tape over there. Um, maybe I'll get another tape real quick for the so that I can showcase this. Sorry, I wasn't prepared, but I got something set up with that, with the tape that I'm using today that I want to show you when I get to that point in the video. But, um, I mean, I could have put the laser, basically any kind of offset from the wall that you do to the laser line, you just have to come down the wall here. The, fur the farther away you can shoot the laser from, the more accuracy that you get. I just worked on this little piece of plane here because this sticks out in my way and I got debris hanging on here and I don't want to continue to waste my time doing demo here today. I'm trying to do high level stuff and leave like fill in for my buddy because he can save himself some money that way. So you could shoot from way down there, but I choose to do this here. You know, I just went to the edge of this piece of wood right here and you know, just as a cursory thing, it's about six and a half to push to the concrete there and it's not even well, I'm stuck on something here it's a uh, six and five sixteenths or something there um, 
So what I did was because the laser, where is it up there? The laser can't sit and teeter on this edge. I just moved everything over um, an inch or something. So it's about five and a half there, about five and a half there to those two little pencil lines. Then I set the laser on there, okay? And that's the same distance from that concrete block. God, this fucking Bosch laser. Here's how we turn the Bosch laser on. When you slide the switch toward where the laser comes out, it goes off, and when you pull it back, it comes on. Where are we, fucking Germans? Is this how we do things in Germany? It makes no sense, completely back ass words, as far as I'm concerned. Anyway, it's better than nothing. So I, I set it up to shine through this line, as well as through that line, so any straight line between two points has got enough reference Okay, and it went right across the room over there. And again, that's one inch back from the plane that I want to establish here. Um, it's gonna run out, so we're gonna have it, the drywall will be tight here, and then we're gonna have to push it off over here a little bit. And then we want I want the end of my wall right on that plane. So anyway, I went down there and I made the mark where the laser was on the floor. And then I moved it over an inch, and I snapped the chalk line. So basically the chalk line now goes straight on down it misses the edge here because it's, you know, this thing beneath me is a little bit wonky, but it comes into the plane of this um, framing right here, and it's safe to say that it goes parallel to the side of the building. And in the end here, we're going to slide some drywall on the face of this framing down behind the stair stringer. It's going to come straight up here, and it's going to die on the ceiling wherever. The ceiling's going to go around. The end here is going to get a bit bigger, so it'll be out and over smooth. It'll go right on down until it goes around the corner into the laundry room. Everything will be finished out square and smooth here, and that's how we're going to get set up and started. And then I, I took a measurement here of what I had for floor to there, made it a little bit shorter, and I built a wall on the floor the way you would for a new build. So this is both got the same exact length plates on top and bottom all the studs are the same length I slid it in here until it stopped on this chalk line right and I could pin it there but I still am trying to be at 90 degrees from this chalk line now so if we're at 90 degrees then I can go over there and be at 90 degrees to that wall then I can come back and check my work and pretty soon we'll have what amounts to a rectangle with 90 degree corners for a floor plan in here. That's how we'll do it. So I get the chalk line, I get the wall in here, I made him a little short, see he's a whisper too short so I'm not jammed over here, and I want to swing him about that point until this is 90 degrees. Well for that we use three, four, five, okay? Long story short once again. Any, any multiples of three, four, and five will create a right-handed triangle. Three and four are, you know, multiples of three and four are the legs that create the 90 and the multiple of five is the hypotenuse so i know if i go down the wall to 48 inches that's where my layout line is there i double check but that's four feet right there and i measured down the chalk line from that point to three feet there then i put five feet right on this now it's important that you use the right side of the tape you disregard the rest of the tape completely but this edge of the tape i put the five foot mark right at three feet on the chalk line and I came over here, and I was out in space, but I just tap, tap, tap the wall to me until the very ex, you know, perfect corner of the tape on the same side came in and touched the four-foot line there. Now I know that I've got three, four, five, 90 degrees. I can shoot, you know, pin the wall at this uh, edge here, and I know the base of it's right. Then it's a matter of plumbing it up like that and hold it there, and now I can start to work off from it and chase myself around the room, keeping things plumb level and square. And when we get done, everything here will be much better than it was. Good enough for government work. That's how easy it can be to start and work in a space like this. If you just built wall sections and slapped them tight to the walls all around in here, you'd have awkward, uh, more time spent putting the drywall in here and like I said as you, as you move equipment and shelving and counters and anything else like that in here It starts to betray the fact that the room isn't square And if you have a square floor covering system where it dies into the wall It shows all those little pieces that are like You know weird shapes and it just looks like shit So this ought to look real nice and we'll hide all this garbagey old building um, behind it there Okay, we ran home for the weekend to take a little break and now we're back and we stopped at the end of sort of getting this room square as far as the floor plan being square, the walls being square and plumb and you can see how out of whack now. Everything from here to the right is an addition across the front of the building and I'm running into another problem now that's really screwing me, see, because we left this drywall or plaster and metal lath and stuff here where Brad's coming through and we're going to put drywall on this framing but you want the face of the drywall to come into this and be something that you can finish 
and that disappears. So I was so careful to make all this framing come in a half an inch from the face of this plaster, even though the plaster's you know thicker than the than the drywall is. So we get all done here, and I'm looking for this area to be a closet in this bedroom. All right, so they got windows out to the to the um, to the lofted area. They got his and hers uh, power and his and hers sconces on either side of the bed that's like here. And on this side, there'll be a closet space. I'm going to take an angled um, box down from this window and notch out the floor here. So all the window light's going to go out underneath the balcony, and this will be finished off in here. And then we'll have to have a door here. The problem I'm running into is that if I set the end of this framing half an inch off the face of this drywall and I set this face of this framing at the same um, sort of place as the face of this here, the straight line from the face of this framing through the face of this framing and over to there is, uh, is different. This is 43 inches here and it's the chalk line here on the floor. I mean it's almost three inches narrower. It's nearly, you know, it's 41 or something over there. That's the product of that straight line, unfortunately. So if I have to keep the side of this plate tight to the end of this wall and I have to pivot over here until the 43 inches or whatever, that the number is equal. So equal width all the way across here. That's what we want. That I can't check those corners, but I check this one, and I check this one, and I check this one with the carpenter square, which is long enough to establish that these are pretty nice and 90, 90, 90, okay? That puts us off by this much over here, and the face of this framing, we really need it to be from this face to this face over here. But see, this minimizes the problem area. What I'm basically gonna do here is I'm gonna snap a line from this point to this point, and I'm gonna hack a long, thin triangle off of this sole plate here, and that's gonna force the surface of this framing. Now, every stick that I put in here, now it's only a couple, the end cap, and maybe one or two, not even two, maybe one and the end cap will be custom rips in here, and the top plate will have to match this situation, but that means this little piece will be the only weirdo piece, all to accommodate that old plaster and that door and not disturbing it here for the sake of cost and time. But as soon as we get away from that, everything else can be fundamentally correct here. And you, you could say, you know, why don't you just kick this over and, and make it work out to be a half of an inch from the drywall all the way along there. Let this play out a couple inches, you know, differently. Who's going to know? Well, the problem becomes that this wall intersects with the plane of this roof, see? So then all of a sudden, uh, if the wall goes back in that direction another three inches, that means it gets shorter the entire way. And so I'm exaggerating it here, but the, the wall apparently, where it intersects the ceiling, will be at a slow downward angle. And you say, well, that's not that big of a deal. No, but the end treatment for that piece is going to be a, is going to be a compound miter. The end treatment for every stick that goes in this wall, every stud, will be a compound miter. All the kings and cripples across the top of the door is a compound miter. And then when you get done, the pieces of drywall that you have to make for the face of this on the outside the in are relatively complicated nothing the drywall hanger can't make but they're not square cuts with the t-square you can measure and lay them out so it's going to save us all that custom fucking around for me to mitigate that problem right here just cut it off at the knees make a couple weird studs so the far side of it works out perfect with that drywall the near side of it is all the same and we preserve the plumb level and square quality of this room, which is going to come into play in other ways. You know, it's going to come into play down the road forever. People take rooms to be square and plumb and make their plans and their furniture and, and everything like that, you know, providing that they are. And when you get into one that isn't, it's a real pain in the ass. So let's come back and see how this little custom wall turns out. But I think in the end, it's going to make our life kind of real nice and easy. Let's take a look at the his and hers shower now. We talked about it and it made sense, I think I ran it by them, to do a uh, mixed valve and shower head on both ends of this big 60 inch by 32 inch um, tile shower they're going to have. It meant that, uh, well, why did it mean? Oh, I wanted to reframe this wall because it was pretty, pretty light and, you know, uh, just tacked together and I needed more rigidity out of it. And then I was looking at this door over here, which was a product of this wall's location and as high as it could be under the roof line to, you know, still function. So my buddy got what looks like a deal on this for 50 bucks uh, or something on clearance, but he took everything that he needed off the bottom of it, which meant that that lower rail is getting to be so visually narrow. It's actually narrower than the top rail, which as a doors, as doors go in millwork, the lower rail is normally heaviest and then the middle and high sometimes descend in width or whatever. Anyway, it's a bit weird and I didn't want him to have to cut it anymore. And he had it just a whisper above this subfloor. And I mean, we've blocked up this toilet flange because we're going to have a half inch of hardy and then ostensibly 
uh, at least three eighths, if not a half an inch of thin set and put some tile on it. So basically it was gonna have to swing even higher and it couldn't be slid up in this opening and I didn't want him to have to cut any more off from it. So in order to go up with it, I had to go over with it because as, as you know, the outside corner goes over, it can go higher and higher and higher. So I wanted everything I could get to the right. Now this is at the old door king or jack position. It's not technically a jack, but that's at the old position where the jack was for the door. I have this, I have another three and a half inches here now because I scooted this wall over three and a half inches and I had the ability to do that in the end because my buddy, the way he had framed this, he had framed a second wall here at the head of the of the shower where he had originally planned on the mix valve. So the finished wall in here would have come along and then jumped out three and a half inches or four and then gone over into the shower. And I think that's just a lot of fiddling around to tile those areas and stuff and now it's so much cleaner it'll just be a smooth wall the tower or the, excuse me the shower base will just sit here there'll be a curb on it and stuff that you'll step over into that anyway I had to re-drill a hole in the floor and move everything I'll just stretch the leg to the shower downstairs in the drain but <coughs> I moved these manifolds back up to, to uh, four you know one in four out instead of one in three out and I got over here with cold and hot and so you know, those go underneath and there's a hot water supply to the bidet. I still don't know how that bidet works. We got to talking about it. I said, you know, it won't be a warm bidet. And unlike, you know, or just any warmer than when you run any hot water, you've got to wait and wait and wait for the hot water to come in. And then you need a mix valve to add cold almost immediately before it gets too hot. So there's hot and cold over there. I'm not sure if it was necessary. I've been trying not to think too much on this project because it's kind of just for friends but the more it goes along the more i've realized the more thinking i better be doing and you know getting ahead of stuff here for them on their on their behalf so that's the state of that bathroom i think it's basically really good um now these windows uh they were cut off by this balcony before and i thought that made them look like really like an overthought and then my friend kind of took a you know my buddy took a, a stab at notching out the balcony over here cutting it back but he wasn't really sure where to take it to and you know how to make it work out it's not terribly square it's not square in this regard and those are just a couple two by sixes in there so um i think it's a cool idea i just think it needed to be tightened up so you notice this wall this back wall isn't framed at all which i realized we're going to have to do rather than starting over there where it kind of began i started fresh over here and realized quickly that essentially if i were framing this wall up anyway i would make a regular window opening with a with a what you would call a header and a jack and a king and that would be plainer with what is a basically the rough opening for these windows here so that's that and then they give you this window package it's got the you know there's the aluminum that's used to install the window back here and then there's this outside corner that's finished in the same color as the window sash and that's supposed to sit down on top of and be caulked to however you you know finish the jam so this leaves him the ability now the jam was finished finished before with um, a little bit of quarter inch luon stained but he would said he wanted to have this white in here so i was thinking that little bit of luon could be pulled off the caulk bead that holds it to this trim corner and taken right off down to the to the sill down there then you could drywall this whole surface right over into the sash uh, you know over into this to this aluminum here the bright finished aluminum drywall this all out and drywall the back of this you know we're gonna this is going to have like a rafter system or whatever on it there just so that the inside surface of it goes tight from the inside plane of the jam as a smooth surface all the way down to the bottom plane of that of the balcony we'll go down and look at it however right now i'm talking about i wanted the inside to be super clean and smooth and white if he wants it to reflect light and then he can sit this back down onto that and caulk it back down again and be about as nice as you could get in terms of going by a giant window like that with a big thick balcony like this and making it look like it wasn't just an after afterthought we got the um drywall off of this and push the wall out so this is all going to be one new planar surface here and brad's been working on um carrying this framing out to the surface again like i said should have just framed this with two by six when they did it would have had more insulation wouldn't have need to added framing and now he's going to throw some um, polyisocyanate in there as well this needs fiberglass um but if you go down here and have a look at this, see how I tipped, I had it off the joists. I don't know if the fisheye lens is gonna make it apparent here. But when I jumped across these joists that I cut off, rather than cutting them plumb, I cut them at the angle that's gonna be the angle that goes right on up and intersects the edge of the top of the jam there. So again, this is gonna be a nice clean space that if he wants to carry white down the side, he can. And then the bottom of this will be white. And uh, you know, when you back off from it, 
I don't know, it, it's hard to see it still. But uh, I think it'll finish out and look pretty rad, uh, you know, pretty professional. It'll, it, it's one of those things that I think if we chase it far enough with enough good theory and craftsmanship, um, it, we can get away completely from things looking like an afterthought and actually re basically um, make them a signature thing. You know, make it pop around the fact that, you know, that's how we did that. See it here, so it'll just kick over in there. That means that you won't get any daylight into those rooms upstairs, and that, you know, all the light will be coming in, for the most part, down here. But it's a cool little cathedral area over the kitchen sink here for a hanging light, and, and if he has plants or something in there, I think it's going to be cool. Um, I just think they're going to need to, you know, the day that dr drywall comes and covers up so much of the light that we've been taking for granted upstairs, like it does in every project, all of a sudden things feel smaller, because, you know, you didn't realize that... Obviously, this this you don't have this space. Your eye feels this space. It doesn't feel this space. So when you take three or four inches off of the surface of everything, all the way around you, above and below, after you finish the floor, it gets tight and small. This room's going to be quite tight, but a lot better and more functional than they've got or have had so far, which I'm pleased with. I'm excited to, uh, to see these to see these happen. Lots of busy mess making around here. All right, let's get a little further and then come back and look at things. Bright sunny morning. We got this closet uh, framed for the most part yesterday, starting with this problem with the plate and keeping the room square. Um, as I said, I just this is a custom rip now. The sole plate necks down a half an inch to this direction. The stud necks down a half an inch and you know is back at a full width at the top. So it's just a narrow outside corner right in this area. All for the sake of making the plywood that's on the face of this come in essentially planar with that plaster in here. So this will look nice and copacetic and smooth and you won't have to pull any more plaster down. And then we had this bump out for the window which turned out real nice. Um, I basically just framed the opening like I was saying and then put a layout in here and then uh, you know on 16 inch centers where was it? I think starting on that side. Anyway then there were cripples over this window opening and then I defined the opening as the largest possible notch uh, on this aspect before it runs into the heavy beam that supports this um, this uh, loft up here. So the biggest possible notch, and then I just pull the string line from you know the inside corner here through and past the that joist down there and snapped it actually. Yeah, so I snapped it an inch away from what I wanted there, and then I worked off it back at an inch, but I could babysit the fact that it was at an angle. And, you know, the layout ends up just becoming a stretch, you know. I just figure uh, the angle from here to the inside corner there, because I want that to be smooth and go right on by, uh, is 12, in, uh, 12 degrees. And so if that's 12, and the back of the theoretical triangle is 90, that's 102, and every triangle is 180 degrees total, so that leaves 78 degrees, which is this angle here. Um, well, it's this is actually 78 from here to there is 78, and whatever's left of 90, you know, is the rest of it there. Um, you know, 12, 12 degrees or what have you. But the way carpentry tools and stuff work are that they give you the angle that you can set other tools to. So the angle that I'm, the angles that I'm talking about are what I set my circular saw and stuff too and really what you're cutting and making in terms of a piece is the other part of 90 degrees regardless i know what i'm doing <laughs> and uh this will frame out real nice it'll be able to take r13 or r15 if it's rock wool and um the piece of drywall will be, have a like a thin aspect here and then go over there this face is drywall there's a return on uh this wall here and a return here for this piece of drywall there's enough on the inside surfaces here on both sides and enough of an end cap here to come down i tied that there to catch the other piece of this triangle and then this guy here starts and returns us there inside corners done there done there and over here it's the right angle but this furring strip is rolling up so it's pulling my joinery apart there but overall oh and then the other subject to this is that I'm going to continue to use a variety of um, expanding foams we've got the black for big gaps the red OG the window and door so the window and door I'm going to come in here this is the rough see this but there's just air gap all the way around this window I mean that's massive um, in there I don't know if you can see it if I let the camera expose but I mean all that's got to be pumped full of foam I'll use the window and door in there so it doesn't distort the uh, jams 
and then we'll use the big gap in areas like this corner. We just want to keep air from migrating around in here. Every bit of breeziness within the structure is ultimately ends up being um, energy transfer, delta T or whatever. And it'll either bring warmth into a cool area you're trying to keep cool or vice versa. So we want to seal up the draftiness and we'll use all kinds of expanding foams. And I'm going to copy my work over here where uh, Brad got started already. I think it's overcut, but that's okay. It'll let me see what it is I'm trying to do. But then obviously again, you know, pumping this full of window and door foam all the way around, uh, framing this out completely. All of this is going to be, all this road noise, I mean, that's daylight, right? That's daylight. Windows are hanging open right now, so there's not a, a lot of road noise. Oh, Brad's uh, packed out this framing. There's a little bit more pieces, a few more pieces to do. And then the last two inches he's made up with three or four sheets of polyisocyanate that's fitting in like that. Fiberglass and polyiso there. We'll need a ledger to return the edge of the of the roof line and uh, button this stuff up. Oh, I think he's getting a, must be getting, getting a trailer or something. Okay. Moving right along. All right, I just want to make a quick video for the record here. When I showed up, ostensibly all these walls had been framed. And at this point, uh, I ripped that wall out and reframed it. I ripped this wall out and reframed it. I ripped this wall out. I ripped this wall out and reframed it. I ripped the door out, and it's going to end up needing to be reframed. Uh, we pulled out the front of this... Uh, the front of this balcony by a couple of feet and all the wall segments that came down had like had the four sides of a rough opening that were wrong for the windows here kind of loosely framed in space not conventionally framed so those got broken down and thrown out and re essentially reused nothing was thrown right away here but this has been all newly framed across the front around this window is being framed now around the window over here for the closet is being framed now this wall and this other wall here are come as a result of my idea to tear this little step up floor section that was too low of a ceiling too high of a floor total garbage space has been has happened here um i copied the fact that this these walls in this aspect against this roof plane and this roof plane didn't have a top plate that met correctly i knew that was kind of a quick and dirty shortcut i had thought later that we we're going to have a problem with this plane and this plane coming together you got drywall coming along drywall coming along here i think the two sheets will just touch there although i am going to extend this plate top plate basically could have actually had an outside corner what i'll probably do is i'll make it and stick it to the bottom side of these two ends with the miter dial in right where i want and then i can measure and build the little pieces that fill in there and screw them in through here so there'll be a double layer in that location but basically that point where the two plates meet and i'll have to find that point here we'll have to snap a line or pull a line there and you have to set your drywall board your sheet dead nuts on that inside corner because you're going to have a couple ends here of sheets and basically if you don't pay a lot of attention here uh you have a wandering shallow angle that's a motherfucking nightmare to finish and make look nice with drywall but i could have extended that plate and it'll have to be done now over here this is what i looked at and, and i thought that it would be the same on the other side uh it's not easy to see here that's blowing in the wind but um over here it took them two courses of ceiling tile the way that the ceiling tile worked out so therefore the way that they had to put furring strip down and that's two built up in the, at the intersection of these two actual planes of the truss because that's that's what you got here you got two planes of a truss you've got this plane coming in here and this plane coming in there now that's where they meet right there bam and it looks like it's practically on the edge of this furring strip so we'll have to follow that furring strip down and I'll have to fill in that plate and we'll have to be careful about the drywall in here again because it's the type of thing that you look all around everything's looking really nice and then like boop, looks like crap so we moved this wall over. We had to saw it loose, slide it over to actually be flush with this framing. And now it can be drywalled as one, you know, homogenous wall. And this one had to be rasped around here. And this is the difference between being flush as it was before and where it needs to be in reality. So now we want to maybe talk about adding half an inch of plywood on this floor which would have been a nice place to start before any kind of framing so it's really shaping up back again finnegan all right today's the day we've got some 
helpers for drywall. So today's the day that we're going to start drywall. I got the other window uh, lofted out. Yesterday that was a bear. Uh, my buddy had taken a stab at it himself and it needed to be closed, if anything, a little bit, which meant we had to sister that over there and there's a new joist that went in here. But now, you know, the sides, basically the extension jam can follow whatever you build the extension jam out of. In this case, I was going to suggest they put drywall down just for the upper. And then if they want to go back around it with paneling at the bottom, they can go back around it. Talked about trying to do to copy this sort of like ziggurat or whatever sort of step up on the left hand side here we're going to see about maybe doing that so since we have baker scaffold and drywallers today here anytime i think we're going to ask them to get the front of our wall up the you know the front of our dividing wall up there and then we've got the pantry that needed uh, that's where we put the stack through at the beginning of my journey here but i don't know if you can See the light there. I need to pack this wall out three quarters of an inch because that is still just a little bit proud of the surface of the wall up there. So we've got to add a three quarter of an inch behind me, pull some wire and do insulating in here. Brad got drywall returns for the most part, except for up there. And I pulled the um, fridge alcove apart and fixed it up. It was a little loosely framed, so now it's ready for drywall again. But have them focus on that and if they uh, get beyond the pantry in the front upstairs because think about the front upstairs is we can still wa run wiring in the on the second floor side of it if we you know because we will need to be and then there's this wall here that's been essentially full, finished except for a ledger across the top where the ceiling meets the wall but it's all insulated and I'm gonna spend my time here today finishing up this framing and then I'm gonna look at getting the drains that come through for the washing machine <coughs> We got that morning sunrise over the scrapyard. Um, here's how this came out over here, same as the other side. Pretty typical. Just like a wall tipped over at an angle, basically, which makes it nice to insulate and nice to frame, or excuse me, to, to put drywall. And then I'm working on remaking this door frame as far that way as possible, just so that we can cheat it up as much as possible. But, uh, yeah, I got the site cleaned up, which is nice to see, too. Should be easy to work around up here. All right, I'll come back and check it out when we get some board hanging. All right, today is the day. Every day is the day. Um, today's the day that we plumb this laundry room so that that uh, stackable washer dryer can come in here and go to work uh, or that there'll be nothing stopping that after a little bit of drywall and some insulation I guess but that stuff goes pretty quickly uh, we've put it on the floor here in white I think it's gonna be on our left facing us here the other option was on the right hand side facing us here but my you know rear end here is hitting the wall there's only about I don't know there's just a couple inches more here just a tight room when you get all done and with how far out of square it was to be touching the face of the surface here and off by over two inches there uh, same here sitting up from the wall there as it's practically tight there uh, caused us to have a weird inside corner that goes uphill on the right over here I may plane this piece of the roof down so that it's a level line across there this confluence of fuckery here is a real situation I had to we slid that ledger up there that fresh white stick that catches the ends of all those furring strips I set the laser up across the end of the furring strips there and established a line over to here where this framing this red stuff that's a part of this how the front of this church was framed in I got a line over to there then I could put the t-bevel on there and grab that angle then I could put that angle on the end of a stick and then Brad went up in the attic and sent it down as it would stay on the ends of those furring strips until it intersected the wall there and then I looked down it when I was up on a ladder here made sure it was right where I wanted it pinned it there and pinned it there so it's up there um, however the plane of that of those furring strips does not eclipse you know the plane of all this drywall here doesn't get over this red framing and stuff here 
So I'm thinking if I were to come down to that surface and pull that surface across the top of this room, I could force this inside corner to be level and we could add thickness to the ceiling area in this room which would allow you to put more insulation in because it's currently two by six. So it's kind of a squish to get baffle and then the R23 in there. So the top walls of this room took me all day yesterday around the drywall. And I'm just saying that before we lose track of things. Working on a ladder to frame things and working to frame things in a fun house that are, the, the, you know, the items that you're making have to be square, level, and plumb. And the space that you're in is a fun house, twisted up mess. Just sucks time, eats time like candy. We got, the guys got drywall on the front walls here, which has been cool. It's important for my buddy and his wife to um, feel like they're making progress. I don't know what it is about drywall. People just feel like it's progress. Um, I tried really hard to caution them that you don't want to rush it. It's like painting. You don't want to break out the paint and start rolling and mopping it around with a brush until you're truly ready to do it. And I mean, we've got a little bit of plumbing left, elect all the electrical and insulating to do meticulously, not just haphazardly. This area here needs special attention with a, with a insulation, but today I went along here and I went along here and we demoed this off but I started seeing brick here which is a problem and I know this is in the headroom of the entryway downstairs so I was I started to think like what if we came along the laundry room wall came through here rolled off the end of this brick and went straight downstairs so I put my light right there so I could kind of get to that location down there and I went and looked carved this open this was all metal lath and plasterboard I had to use a diamond blade on the grinder so this is that little room's floor and to come uh, down into the floor box of it is like in this area here and here's where that brick starts and it's packed tight with lumber and stuff up in there and then there's a stairs here there's a stairs there are stairs and um, they should be able to be removed and replaced at any time. So I don't want to lace any plumbing through here. And I started to look at how this is soffited down and really the plane overhead here should have been just pushed along the back of the stringer and then dropped here if necessary to be square and then go level again across here to this joist and then drop down again. So this was all like just they jumped across everything here for the sake of making it easy to close in but really it makes it more claustrophobic than it needs to be even though it's easier to finish it just looked like a big all these things always look just like a big racked out um, shape it just looks bad 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 when you, everything's plumb level and square there's no reason to have racked out shapes in here everything should be what looks like a rectangular prism of some kind there's the light so here's the floor bay that we're in here at the end of the stairs and so that's what I think I am going to do is cruise along in that knee wall, then straight down at the end of it next to the brick. Uh, brick must be f part of the footing here or anything. But So then we can go along in this bay so we can zoom right along in there and uh, right along in here, right over the main beam. There's room over the main beam. And then we can just roll right into the um, this, this the stack that goes up to the bedroom bathrooms and stuff over there kitchen sink comes in here so we can just roll off into there and go on down I think it's gonna work out great I mean that's essentially aligned here's the face of this you know this first bay right here goes right on over there so it's gonna be a couple of sticks of two inch pipe but we've got those uh, so then all we got to do is come up with a solution to disguise that piping but I think I've already discussed that with them they like this kind of ziggurat kind of step shape there were other things in here like that and i think they meant mean to reinstall them but this zip zip thing here i'm going to come out and frame this out here so that it goes up and over and then up again and across the face of this how to do that see this works out to be plainer with the wall so i'm going to have to figure out a way to do that where i've already pulled the plane of this wall out here I don't want to be additional, and I can't be additional to that, just to carry that top ledge surface. So maybe, maybe we'll just come down the face of this wall. I've got to look here, because this one appears to come out in the middle of that step. And over here, this is proud of that. So I may have to cut this all back to the point where 
another face can come down here and that this is the front face of this wall and then at this elevation come off and down and meet the floor at the same extent that this does and really just add a lower box anyway building all of that as lightly as possible because ultimately we're going to tunnel through it with a big size drill bit to get the the washing machine drain in there um, and then try to make it all make sense and look snazzy when we're done not to mention pulling these out from underneath the ledger of this balcony which i expect is anchored well enough not to need those briefly but i don't want to hear or see any creaking i'll probably pull this one first and do all my rebuilding of it and then take the second one out so there's just always one underneath there um, but then we're just going to sneak down into the basement and then uh and then tie into that plumbing then of course we've got to bring water supply over here etc we had the baker sat up in here yesterday for the drywall we got the um alcove for the refrigerator fixed up and this is the pantry they got wiring and insulation in here kind of in a hurry in hopes that the boys would be able to drywall but we didn't get to it so anyway maybe i can get somewhere today with this framing and washer drains we'll see well this is where we got at the end of yesterday which was pretty good sweat to pecs um these, these aren't clamped yet but sweat to pecs for these for this kit um had to buy those little adapters put the um trap as far down as possible because i just ended up with one little window here of opportunity only just big enough if you would believe it this was here and then we decided that actually first i said you know it'd be cool to copy this form on the left hand side um and then just clad this whole thing with drywall just as this is plaster here and finish the edge of this down with this tone which is um like deeper than honey or so maybe it's like a cherry or something sort of tone anyway um and then i plated and made that shape there and then just i knew i was going to have a small window there so instead of putting another like what you'd call a jack underneath this and any sort of plate there or any sort of king here um I, it's totally um you know devoid of that however it worked perfectly um i just because i was so low here going up at the appropriate angle actually worked out to just get my trap off the sole plate it's not tight or anything it moves and everything i've got to crank that down so all in all worked out pretty snazzy and we've got a good amount of distance to this cold monolithic concrete block outer wall um we may slide polystyrene foam board behind some of these systems that are right against that concrete it's just got a better it's hard to beat the r value in polyisocyanate or um expanded polystyrene foam by the thickness um so now it just needs power i got uh a, a whip for the machine itself it's four pin uh dryer cord because it didn't come with anything on it and then we've got a recess well we got a job box here and a recess outlet and a cover so that just that'll be showing out of the wall Oh, and then downstairs you saw where the water and stuff came from. We're getting down to the end, this is what I opened up and found out that staying in the floor or, in the, or coming through the floor and stuff was going to be a nightmare. If it was me, I'd actually pull these and finish up the face of this and then make a plane of the back of the stringer itself. But then these had angled jumpers down in here. Um, but this is where we came out here, right at the bottom of those stairs. And this pair of joists here has been cut higher as well as i mean it was already a doubler to carry the back corner maybe that's what the problem with the stairs is although this all seems copacetic um in terms of i don't know that it's migrated or failed i just think it's maybe constructed that way anyway they're in there twisted anyway this is notched out for headroom i would finish over there but it worked out perfectly for this and then this bay turns into cold air return sealed with steel so we had to be behind so we had to roll through and i haven't finished routing the water supply like it is there um see here's where it turns into cold air return so we had to be back there and it falls right on down right on down right on down i had an option to turn here and then elbow in to the combo down but i chose to roll elbow in to combo you know what looks like backward or whatever but it should shoot it in the right direction it's just washer water and we'll go on down like that um, i got to looking at this stack and i don't know why 
Um, my buddy built it this way. I'd have stayed in this floor bay right through here. I mean, there's a block there, but he just smacked that, smashed that out. I'd have stayed right through here and then rolled down and then put another elbow at a 45 and another elbow and an elbow at a 45 to roll through here and really only come through head space right there. And then and that's only if I didn't feel like I could get through this couple joists to roll over in there. It really is a best practice to keep that stuff out of your headroom. It's something that somebody could do in the future because that's all plastic. So, NBD. Right. Um, just felt like mentioning it. But today I'm going to get a piece of plywood on the wall enough to start cleanly routing these in at kind of 90s and stuff like that. I just tack it up to get us up and running before. I'll zip those Tapcons out, slide the plywood in, put the plywood up, and then put that panel back right on through the Tapcon holes again. Uh, and then I'm going to actually lay it out. I'll show you upstairs. I wanted to get a sense of those look to be about two inches center to center. I'll make it, I'll check that. But uh, what I'll do is I'll throw a grid on the plywood while it's on the bench, so to speak, with straight lines. Just a two inch grid or something. Um, but then once the panel's on there, I can use those lines to sort of just keep, keep track of what routes I want to take and what lengths I want to cut and stuff and keep it kind of looking orderly. So this is what we'll put on the wall. I may even leave this weird angle on it for fun. All right, then. We'll have complete water systems, and it'll be time to start doing punch lists because I got to get out of here. I can't stay till it's over. All right, we ended up making it around the corner in this little matching wall to go with the other one there. Actually, doing the inaugural clothes wash, which is my load of wash because I ain't got no more clean clothes. Um, we've got the uh, ten three run around here. Let me see if I can turn the light on. Just a nice little flush mount outlet box with that. Uh, new heavy hoses. Uh, the trap goes up over there and the dryer vent. Um, she goes out the far wall over there. I used a bunch of great stuff to freeze it in place. Um, so everything works pretty nice. I got some styrofoam slid in there. I'm going to put some more in here behind stuff just because that's an outside concrete block wall. When we're done with the washing, we can do the drying, but it ended up there not there where there was a big hole from something else some old anchor or something like that and when I went up the shorter ladder this was right in my face so I just went right to town thinking that was where I'd come out with the center drill to drill right back in and drill a nice smooth clean hole I was super happy about it until I noticed that's the actual location now on this wall this is why we came out this wall because I couldn't be any higher than that, and if I was that high around on the face above the door, I would have been in the in the you know the roof segment there. I would have been wanted to be another at least another foot higher up if I needed to come out of that wall. So we had to come out over here anyway. I made a nice big hole into the core of the blocks here before I realized it. So I backed it up and filled it through full of foam. First and only big goof on this project. Um, but this stuff all drainage falls down there and water supply comes up in that place there. Where's a light? Maybe there's a light that I can take and look at shit. Well, it's the flash. Uh, there's the power. I ended up just coming down here and staying out of that little knee wall with it. The farther away from people who may want to change things with big heavy power lines you can be, the better. So I kept it down from the surfaces there. Kept it away from stuff here. If it has to come out with the stairs, it'll have to come out with the stairs. Threw in a couple new breakers in, 30 amp breakers. One for that washing machine, one for the new hot water tank, which we decided that we wanted. I hacked a bunch of stuff off and got it right out of the box not including this one because that one's buried over in there didn't feel like it cleaned the box up as much as i could could pulled everything in behind these like plastic wings that they give you in here where i could that one wouldn't go but it's just to keep things clear um took my stuff in only as long as it needed to be no longer anyway it came down with that new number 10 wire on this side and that one goes into the box but this one goes to the new hot water tank jumped across there oh here's where the drain came down where they notch this out and falls into this bay and then it goes right on down with the water supply right there and rolls along and rolls along and rolls along and falls in here and then goes down now i could have uh taken this combo fitting and street 
elbow here and rolled in here and rolled up and down. I'm just trying to keep things up above the plane and the ceiling, but here's the mana block. Now I got a piece of three quarter inch plywood on the wall with some tap cons. And then uh, I laid out the spacing that I wanted for everything here in pencil on these so that it was easy to route everything down. This is an optical illusion, it's nice and square, it's just bent out from the wall. Um, but we got stickers on here now, I can label things. And so now, if you remember, it's a new water supply over here. Main uh, meter, pressure release, or pressure um, regulator, check valve, main water in through the wall. Up into the mana block so you can isolate it at the main valve there. You could put another valve in here if you wanted to, but I didn't feel like it. Over to there, up to all of these, and then back out and over and back into the room here. And then you got your uh, pressure pot here, and it comes down and it goes into the new hot water tank. Isn't that nice? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, this got isolation here, valve to sweat to copper to a union, so the union will spin off of these if you want. And uh, PEX is flexible enough here, that's not moisture, these are just like super shiny. Anyway, um, PEX is flexible enough for these to just be disconnected and moved out of the way in the event that you want to change, um, you know, and put a new uh, water tank in in the future, so I didn't use the flexible lines. Code sometimes stipulates that there's more length of copper here, but I don't give a fuck because I'm a maverick. And the red comes back out, and it comes back down here, and you can isolate the mana block there, and then it comes in and serves all these circuits which run out to the rest of the house. And you get a little key here that you can just turn these on and off. So, pretty sweet, eh? Ah, this stuff here is something that somebody else can mess with at another time. Now it's time to do framing punch list, drywall returns, a couple little missing things here and there, blocking for sliding garage or sliding barn doors, and closet rods and railings on the stairwell, and then um, we'll do a final walkthrough. And then I got a GTFO. Cars running, tools are packed up. This is as far as we got phase one. We came in here, yeah. Came in here, and this was all broken out. Stack was only coming into the house here and coming up from the basement downstairs. Got that connected up. Reframed this back wall, reframed this wall, and got the sinks, drains, and water supply in. Came up, changed our mind, changed our mind, changed our mind, but figured out we'll stick to the his and hers. Shower heads coming out of the wall, so we got that all figured out. Took that extra wall out of here, cleaned this all up, moved that drain over as a result, and um, it's ready for, really needs a half an inch of plywood on this subfloor, glued and screwed, and then tile, um, or hardy board or whatever in there. But uh, window alcoves, I got some insulation. This is that rock wall, it works so nice. That's basically solid rock wall, and this will be where they can slide that cupboard in. Uh, they'll have to route and pull a couple out to do some um, wiring there. There might be a little bit there that's necessary, but the baffle goes in and it goes high enough to where when he pours the uh, loose insulation on top of this, he can keep from getting it in. Otherwise, he can add a couple pieces of that. Brad blocked all around. We had 2 by 12 but this will give him flexibility on where he places bracketry for hanging his clothes. I'll have to use some. That's what we did over here for the... We worked out the sink height. There are pedestals. Kind of. They have two legs in the front instead of a, instead of a pedestal that matches in terms of, you know, being ceramic. The legs are like chrome. But these brackets get, uh, I wrote right on there, it's a 33 inches from the finished floor to this surface, but that should fall in here somewhere, and uh, so long as they use inch or inch and a quarter fasteners after the drywall and on top of that inch board, it should be no problem. I don't know where the other one is, but they'll need it. Uh, and in here, he'll have to use five quarter as well for blocking for the uh, closet in some cases, maybe not necessarily. I was thinking if it was down here because of the thickness here there, but you could block in here. Finish the other side of our closet door. Blocked all the way across for the sliding door track here. And um, blocked across the top of the closet door. This was laying around. 
Because to make these um, end caps and stuff, or these plates for these windows where it's like a 2x4 if you were to rack it over, you have to actually make that out of a 2x6. There's not enough material in a 2x4. Um, anyway, so I set up and ripped one edge off of this 2x4 weeks and weeks ago. And then I got distracted and set the saw at 90, did something else for whatever reason, which I don't normally like to do. Then I came back and ripped the side off on my line um, set at 90 and ruined that piece. It was no longer big enough to do what I needed to do. So it's kicked around and kicked around and ended up being perfectly sized to sit in there and has that one angle on it which fit in there nice and snug and this got blocked all around for uh, closets and then uh, since it's an inch and a half and a three and a half inch bay plus a little hair's breadth of space between here and the back wall two inch styrofoam uh, block slid up in there I made all the 15 or the 14 and a half pieces for full bays he'll have to make all the unique ones but you can just cut that with the circular saw don't put it through this table saw it's too sticky it has too high a coefficient of friction friction and it also melts against the blade and you can get a pretty um, rowdy kickback from putting styrofoam through the table saw but the circular saw does not trap it against any fences so it's fine to do fix up this blocking for the railing system um, may want a blocking next to the toilet for the toilet paper and then I just cheated from I established where the plane of the roof will change it'll go through to here to the far side of this wall right here and then put black marks up there and since that'll be where then it tips and comes down at a new angle I sistered onto the sides of these two and brought the ends of them down to what this laser line says see this laser let me, let me turn this on and show you real quick so I set the laser up over there level with the top of that plate and it's level itself and you see when you come over here it's not level anymore it's out by over an inch anyway the point is that the that's where the drywall well wall will stop there and see this this guy on the right hand side I slid him down and over top of that plate to where it met the laser line and I did the same thing over here so when you ultimately when you um, back out of there ultimately everything's so ultimate when you cover this up with drywall, the line where the wall meets the ceiling transition will be visually level, which will look a lot better here, which is ideal. Wander machine still isn't working, or dryer doesn't want to make some loud sound. I don't know if I turned it on, but it's a little bit of attention. And then I threw some um, studs in here that are on a layout now and put a little bit of armor on for those um, systems. Built this last little uh, wall box, which gets you out here. It ultimately, essentially creates this geometry here and there. And so then that can get covered up some day soon. And drywall will slide in here. And everything's copacetic like that. And I think we've seen everything in the basement, but these are the returns and stuff. Some hangers we didn't use, some piping some foam that may or may not end up getting into had to have a couple big SDS bits the little one to center our dryer hole all the way through the big thick wall the bigger one to get through that super solid concrete in the basement for the water main um, they're nice to have if you've got a drill that will run them I own them but uh, didn't bring them with me and that's just how the cookie crumbles so this is, like I say, as we saw it before. This one doesn't go anywhere, so I just left it. I don't want anybody to energize it. Um, and just make a big water fountain here, so I'll just leave it hang there. It's just basically available for the next cold circuit that somebody wants to have. And then I left them their insulation here. Saw that, and saw the new water tank and everything. That's not wet. It's some stain actually smells pretty bad I think it's like fertilizer or something I don't know if it's good for business or not but I'm not going to be in there anymore hanging around breathing it all right maybe we'll come back and look after they get farther on this project huh not bad better than my electrical box